welcome to the second segment of business. Now, some banks in the country say they, are hardly, they hardly benefited from deposits of collapsed financial institutions. This was captured in 2019 Ghana Banking Survey, released by accounting firm Price Waterhouse Coopers. George Raffi has more. The response from the banking chiefs of the 19 commercial banks that were engaged by Price Waterhouse Coopers were based on reports that the remaining commercial banks, especially the multinationals, did benefit from panic withdrawals as a result of the recent banking sector cleanup. But a director at Price Waterhouse Coopers, Destiny Atatise, says that was not the situation on the ground based on the response from these banks. We were expecting that based on the uh, issues surrounding panic withdrawals and the rest, if people were really withdrawing from some of these banks, where were they keeping the, the deposit? And we wanted to find out from them where your deposit level seen any significant increases because of the withdrawal of the license of these banks. And the response we got was that uh, not any significant uh, 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 impact were noted in, in those areas. Yeah. But that is interesting because uh, is it that the, the, the projection was a little bit higher? They were looking for higher numbers because, again, we've seen total deposit growing. So. What were they expecting? Because some are saying that the foreign banks were the biggest beneficiary of this. Does it survey uh, also put question mark around that perception that monies were being moved from the system a while and then they were going to foreign banks? Exactly. Those perceptions inform the question as to where the deposits were landing. And that is why we were surprised that it is this same uh, multinational banks, uh, I mean subsidiaries of these multinational banks, who re mostly responded that they did not see much of uh, uh, an increase in their deposit level. The majority of the banking chief sampled also argued that they see more money as one of the big growth drivers of their business. They do see the mobile money space as uh, helping them to grow their deposit base. Remember, it all started by some of the executives thinking that uh, the telcos and the mobile money business was actually going to be um, a hindrance to the growth of their deposit level. But uh, the response we got from the respondent were more of uh, seeing them as partners and uh, uh, the mobile money business helping them actually growing the, their deposit level. Does it also mean that based on this expectation, have we seen some realignment of uh, funding or maybe subsidiaries that they are committing a lot of resources to this space because of what they are projecting to realize from this space? Currently, not that from the responses because as you are aware, the um, numbers from the mobile money space are still being kept by the banks in a way. So you really will not need a, a subsidiary at this point to be able to do th that. The report sought to elicit the views of bosses of these banks on how they've been affected by the recent banking sector cleanup. Some of the key issues that were questioned included financial inclusion, anti-money laundering, financing of terrorism, banking sector cyber and information, and the full implementation of the minimum capital requirement on the operations. They also cited capital requirement directive as one of the regulatory reforms that would impact on their business. The chiefs were also of the view that the banking sector cleanup has indeed brought some confidence in the banking sector. Now, the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana, ICAG, has fined four audit firms for their roles in their audit of the books of some five banks that were collapsed by the Bank of Ghana. The fines are in excess of two million Ghana cities. But the big question uh, we want to ask is, is this action punitive enough? Well, on tonight's business edition of PM Express at 9 p.m. shortly, Philip Namfuri and his guests will delve into this development. Philip is right here to tell us what to expect. Emmanuel, thank you very much. Mm. So, straight to the point, mm. we need clarity. Be these four audit firms, in any manner, shape or form, were they complicit in the collapse of these banks? We need to establish it. We need mm. to find some clarity with it. And if they were? And if, if they were, were these sanctions punitive, punitive enough? enough? It's 1.1 mm. 1. 1 million. Ghana cities to Deloitte, big enough, we need to find out. Then secondly, in a bank, there's an in internal audit structure that's supposed to report to the board. Now, they're the first point of call before the external auditors come in place. The mm. question we should ask ourselves is, were they also complicit? Were they free to do their work? Because internal audits of banks are supposed to do their work freely. Were they complicit or not? 
we'll find out. I have Dr. Sedo. Mm. You know him very, very sure. astute yeah, gentleman. He's he's re exactly. He's representing the ICAG. I think he mm -hmm. was part of them in some of these dealings. And we have Neno to a champion to bring on, on board what the banks do with their internal audit structures, board reporting, etc. So 9 p.m., everybody should tune in and then we get some answers tonight. Sure. Thanks. And uh, PM Express, of course, promises to be very exciting tonight. Uh, make a date with Philip shortly in about uh, 28 minutes or so for the details. Now, away from that, the Association of Ghana Industries is set to launch the first private energy service center to promote and encourage the manufacturing center and other industry players to adopt renewable energy, especially solar, at the 2019 Ghana Industrial Summit and Exhibition. The energy service center, according to the AGI, has become necessary as Ghana moves beyond aid. CEO of the AGI, Seth Chumakwaba, gave some highlights of the upcoming event when I spoke with him earlier on the marketplace. AGI, energy is key because we're talking industry and we are one of the major consumers of energy in the country. And even we had a challenge with the uh, power cuts and doing so those days, industry it's suffered helpful, the most. Yeah, exactly. So we're always looking at options of promoting uh, efficient energy for industry. And one of the key areas that have come up in recent times has been the uh, renewable energy. It is critical. Whether we like it or not, it is the way to go today. Um, anything that would help to reduce the cost of energy is important for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And we think that the renewable is another option to look at. Of course, within the energy mix, renewable is very small. Uh, we have a, a target, as a government has a target of about 10% of our energy coming from renewable sources. Exactly. And we are not sure we are doing even 2%. So there's a need to promote it a little bit. And as the name implies, renewables. So, so talking about renewables, I know, you know industries are also supposed to contribute to this you know, uh, Natural Renewable Energy Act or something like that. Have you, have you been paying up? Um, contribute in terms of? In terms of, I mean, make a contribution to enhance energy, I mean, renewable energy for industries. And because of that, there's an act. This yes. is Renewable Energy Act. Yes. The act speculates that uh, industries must contribute by paying some amount of... Uh, oh, I think industry is paying a lot. Okay. Um, I think within the uh, energy uh, payment or collection ar tariff arrangement, yes. there's always a certain percentage that probably is used to promote renewables. So mm -hmm. we know VRA, that's why VRA did this huge uh, solar solar system in the okay. north. Okay. You okay. know, uh, it, it spent a lot of money. I sure. believe all this is coming from mm -hmm. the tariffs that we are paying. Mm -hmm. So in a way, we are contributing. Okay. But we don't need to just contribute fund, and we also need to use it. Mm -hmm. And the way to use it is that we need to promote it. There are mm -hmm. a number of players in the renewable energy uh, uh, space. Let's now have our commodity news. That's commodity news for you tonight. Now, in international news wrap, Europe's aviation safety watchdog will not accept a U.S. verdict on whether Boeing's troubled 737 MAX is safe. Details. The World Economic Forum on Africa was supposed to be President Cyril Ramaphosa's chance to prove South Africa's claim to being the continent's top investment destination. It's all gone horribly wrong. The lead-up to the gathering of political and business leaders in Cape Town was marred by a series of xenophobic attacks with scores of foreign-owned businesses burnt and looted and mass protests against femicide. Europe's aviation safety watchdog will not accept a U.S. verdict on whether Boeing's troubled 737 MAX is safe. Instead, the European Aviation Safety Agency will run its own tests on the plane before approving a return to commercial flights. The 737 MAX has been grounded since March after two fatal crashes. Yahoo says most of its email services are working again following a fault that affects users across the world for more than seven hours. 
it had been impossible for people to send and receive messages using the platform or check their webmail accounts. In the UK, the problem had impacted BT, Sky and TalkTalk's email accounts, which are powered by the firm. And that's all in business tonight. Thank you very much uh, for your company. My name is Emmanuel Abuaji. We have a more business news log on to myjoyonline.com/business. Have a good evening.